Welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. Today we have a very special episode, a longtime friend that I just got to meet in person for the first time after, I don't know, six, seven years of, of talking back and forth online. Today in in person, we have Alex Mo, and I'm sure many of you would know him as the macro barista. Man, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. A little round of applause from Woo. the only person. In <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it, it's always really fulfilling to meet internet friends in person. Yeah. Finally, especially after so many years, Alex, uh, you're one of the people that first, I guess, was one of my first internet friends when I first started what I was doing back in 2000. I think the end of 2017 is when we first chatted on Instagram mm -hmm. and we're in 2024 now. So, uh, man, I'm stoked to be here. Absolutely. Back in 2017, we were doing collab posts on infographics, mm -hmm. which some people listening are like, I don't even know what an infographic is. <laughs> <laughs> they were like super simple, like single post that we would compare. I went back and looked, uh, comparing the calories for specific coffees. Yep. Um, and people really enjoyed those at the time. Yeah, this was before the the era of Instagram Reels and TikTok, so everything was still photo content. Yes. So mu as much value as we could pack into a <laughs> photo, photo based infographic, we would do it. Yeah, and super long captions. And this, what did you make them on? What uh, what program? So it wasn't Canva. Didn't exist mm -hmm. yet. It was. I, I can't even remember. It was something like Canva, but very watered down mm -hmm. um, with very ridiculous emojis. They weren't just like the emojis we got on our phone <laughs> yeah. now. They were like just these yellow <laughs> little heads, but they would do s silly gestures like thumbs up and so on. They were so ridiculous, but people enjoyed them. And it was kind of the foundation of us both growing our pages. Yeah, for sure. It, uh, it helped a lot. And that is what something that is the foundation of what I was doing was providing, you know, this unique perspective on coffee beverages mm -hmm. and the infographics really helped people understand what I was doing um, on top because most of the time I would just post a picture of a drink that looked really pretty um, and back in the day people re used to read the caption <laughs> 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 but the infographic uh, provided a much more straightforward like hey this is a coffee that tastes delicious it has this much fat this much protein this much sugar and here's how to make it yeah and Alex helped me convey that message to you know, a couple hundred, couple thousand people at the time. <laughs> yeah. you know? Well, and you've evolved it into videos and continuing that into a massive platform mm -hmm. now, just like the, the evolution and constantly being willing to adapt to the, the new platform and what people are enjoying is something that I've admired just from your work in general. Thank you. Yeah. It's been, it was kind of weird at first when I, so I think 2020, maybe 2020, Okay. In 2021, I can't remember. Somewhere in that time frame is when TikTok, TikTok really started blowing up and Instagram launched Reels. And that was when I started posting videos. And it definitely felt uh, a little bit uncomfortable just because I wasn't on camera. I didn't do YouTube or anything. I was just taking pictures of these beverages uh, on the back of my car. So transitioning to video was a little bit scary. But when I started posting it, uh, it seemed like people welcomed it with open arms and, um, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed staying with the times as the years have gone by. And as you continue to evolve your content, that's part of why I even got to meet you in person because mm -hmm. you're on a, I mean, a crazy road trip yep. starting your own podcast. Yeah. So, uh, man, I've, I've been on social media for almost going on eight years and I've wanted to do something longer form, so AKA YouTube. Um, and also I wanna meet and connect with all of these people I've known from the internet, like we're doing now for years. And so I decided to start a show on YouTube called The Tailgate Coffee Table. And it's pretty much the whole premise is I travel to meet up with other creators or people that I wanna meet and hang out with. I bring my espresso machine on the back of my truck and so on my tailgate, we make coffee from on, on my espresso machine. Um, we sit down, have a short conversation and get to know each other. And that's that. And so the unique thing about it for me is that it's, I travel to wherever these, these guests will be, right? And so I live in Austin right now, we're in Columbus. And so I drove, it was set, it's a direct, directly to drive here from Austin is about 17 hours, but 
I went to Houston and then into St. Louis and then over to here. And so it was like a 21 hour drive total to get here. And then from here, I'm headed over to, uh, to Jersey and down the East coast. And then I'll loop back over to Austin. So yeah, I'm just on a massive trip, uh, camping, shooting, shooting this content and uh, meeting amazing people. But you went also to the West coast, right? Yeah. So about a month ago, my girlfriend and I, we, we traveled up through Denver, up into Canada, over into Washington, Oregon, come over into Utah. Yeah. We've been, <laughs> it's been a crazy, crazy summer. How many, do you have a rough idea of how many miles you've put on your truck? So the last trip we were on the road for three weeks, I would say it was, it was close to 7,000 miles. Wow. And this one, I mean, I'm, I'm already at like 1200 on this trip. So yeah. by the time I'm done, it'll probably be closer to 3,000, maybe 3,500 wow. on this trip. So 10,000 miles this summer. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty impressive for myself. <laughs> pretty healthy, but, yeah. But I love driving. I love being on the road. It's very meditative for me. Um, camping and hiking has, is a very, uh, it's a piece of the foundation of who I am. That's what I grew up doing. Um, and so I absolutely just love being out here on the road. Through your recent travels, has there been a favorite spot that you've gone to? Yeah, so... On our on our trip through the West Coast, um, we went to the the West Coast of Oregon. So beautiful, so surreal. But there's there's a national park there called Crater Lake. It's up in the mountains, and it's a massive lake that was formed by an asteroid millions of years ago. And there's no access to the lake except for one hiking trail. You can't get boats in there. And it's just miles up in the mountains. The water is crystal clear, like aquamarine blue. Um, it's like between 40 to 60 degrees year round. Wow. And it was one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. We did the hike down the trail uh, to get to where you can touch the water and get in the water. And there was a spot where you could jump off a cliff. So I jumped off the cliff and then we went and swam for a bit and it was, it was freezing. It had, it was probably closer to like 50, 52 degrees, but mm -hmm. still very cold to swim in. And I swam out as far as I could. And you just look down and it's just this deep turquoise blue, like unreal. Wow. And then you just look around and the sides of the lake are like this. Cause it's just a big, like a big dome, like an implosion type spot where an asteroid hit and so it's just a steep surrounding and it was it was euphoric yeah and i was just floating out there laying on my back in the in the cold water and the it was just unreal is there a bunch of people there are you just yeah there was a fair amount of people but it wasn't it wasn't like you know you see things on instagram where it's like instagram versus reality to these national parks or these tourist destinations where some uh influencer takes a really pretty video of them on a swing or whatever and then you zoom out and it's like a thousand people around them it was kind of like that, but it didn't take away from the beauty of, of the park itself. Okay. Yeah. The, those, those pictures where it's like you zoom out and there's just a line of a thousand people waiting to get the picture at that exact same spot. Those make me laugh, but, uh, that sounds, I didn't even know that existed. It sounds amazing. Oh, it's so, so beautiful. And then second to that would probably be Moab in Utah. So that's where like Arches National Park is and just all this really, really cool desert terrain. Uh, it feels like you're on another planet it's it's all this just red rock and um we did a ton of hiking to waterfalls and um it was just unreal yeah it's so beautiful what what the u.s you know what we have in in the united states to travel and see all the different types of trains and environments is so so amazing is there anything that you're looking forward to on this second half of the yeah, trip so i've never been to the east coast i oh, okay i lived in florida but i've never really been uh by New Jersey and the Carolinas and things like that. And so I'm looking forward to on this trip, kind of going through some of those areas, seeing some of the fall foliage, like the, it, we're in September right now, going into October soon. So I'm looking forward to seeing the trees changing color and uh, just seeing, seeing what kind of stuff is over there. I've never been there. So that's probably something you don't see a whole lot is the trees changing and so on. So this mm -hmm. is going to be a new-ish experience for you. Yeah. Texas is, Texas is dry. Um, <laughs> it's like, yeah, hot. We go from uh like 100 degree summer to humidity, then we'll get like 3 months of 70 degree weather mm -hmm. and sometimes it'll get kind of chilly like 40 30 I guess. Um but nothing like nothing like the mountains and so yeah, looking forward to it a lot. What's the what's the thing that you're wanting people to learn the most about you from starting the podcast? Um I think that I don't know if it's, I guess, okay. So something about me is just kind of my story and 
where I come from and, you know, where I've gotten to in life currently, I want people to, to hear my story because I think one of the reasons that I think I was able to gain a following on social media is because I was just sharing my journey of life while I was sharing these recipes, but while I was in college, while I was transitioning out of the military. Um, and I think that a lot of people felt related to that story because it's normal. It wasn't just like some like rich influencer posting Lamborghinis and posting all their travel content without showing how they got there or that it could have been handed to them, or whatever. Um, and if it was, I'm not a hater. That's great. Like I really, that's awesome. You know, that'd be great to be able to do that for my children or whatever. Um, but I hope people get to know me on a deeper level where I come from um, and just feel inspired um, by hearing what I've gone through and dealt with. And also my goal is to bring that out of the guests that I have on the show too. So some of these creators that people see online, um, hopefully be able to bring out a different side of them that they may not share online or just bring up topics that they don't talk about because that's not their niche um, and help people get to feel more related to you know, these, these people, they only see online. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that's kind of my, like, a, I guess, a, a talking about what I want people to know about me, um, a little bit deeper purpose of the show that's like near and dear to, to my heart is to hopefully reach a generation of young men. Um, because growing up without a father, it has, and then seeing young men that, do have that fatherly figure and that uh, that positive role model of a man in their life, seeing the difference that can make on how a young man can turn out, how a boy can grow and uh, figure out who they are, it makes a massive difference. And so that's also something that I hope to provide and I hope that it reaches that audience in some way um, is just some inspiration and some hope and uh, mentorship even so, um, there's been tons of podcasts I've listened to that I don't know the people, but I feel like they're mentoring me, you know? And so that's kind of a, a deeper, a deeper, a much deeper purpose to me of why I'm doing yeah. the show too. Low reps is best. High reps is best. Fruit is so it's good. It's terrible for you. You should lift heavy. High reps, Carbs low are needed. Keto Squats are bad for you. Squats are great You for should squat astrograms. It's fine. It fits my macros. for idiots. When there are so many mixed messages going around, it's hard to know what you should even do or focus on. But that's exactly where physique development one-on-one -on -one coaching comes in. You might have heard of online coaching or even hired a coach before, but we believe in teaching you the why behind what we do while truly taking your life into consideration. We want to train, educate, and empower you to reach your goals and help you to stop spinning your wheels and just finally feel good. And hey, we're here to help you look good too. You need you. Your health is your wealth. So join Physique Development and let us be the last coach you ever need. The first question that comes to mind with you speaking to that it takes us even deeper, I would say. Okay. But what would be the first male in your life that was the, the role model for you? That's a great question. And actually, I haven't even talked about that on the show yet. So uh, it would be my grandfather. Okay. So my grandpa and my uncle both, because um, my father left when I was six, so I was very young. Uh, but my grandpa was also a pretty young grandpa. So when I was six, he was like in his early 50s. And so he took me to do everything. Um, he... I think he kind of took me in as like his own child um, just because, you know, a lot of times parents, they don't like raising kids. It's their first time raising kids. And so having grandchildren can be like a second chance for a lot of grandparents. And so I think that he unintentionally took advantage of having a second chance at, at raising another kid. And he took me in and we, he would take me adventuring everywhere, hiking, hunting, camping, um, four wheeling, just every day of the summer, um, as much as he could in between the summer, he was Navy SEAL. So he's, uh, very physically fit has always been fit. He's 77 now and literally just jumped off one of the bridges in Austin really? uh, into the end of the lake. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's just, he's just a really great dude. And he just took it upon himself to be that role model for me. Um, uh, yeah, I would say my grandfather. So what about your uncle? Was he local to you or was he? Yeah, he okay. was local to me. So he also kind of stepped in as that role too. He was like the cool uncle, right? Um, where he would just like, I think what, I think the 
the way he was a role model to me was how open minded he has been to the world. You know, he was he was in the navy, and then he he's learned a ton of languages, like literally random stuff, like Hebrew. He's traveled all over the world. Wow. Um, and the way that he's traveled and made friends, made like lifelong friends in all these different countries, and speaks multiple languages, and um, is just open to how and accepting of however anybody wants to live their life that that has been a huge inspiration to me on on the side of my uncle do you have a, a favorite story with you and either of them uh so many there it's i think back and literally just like have a flood of just memories um flashing in uh i think one of my favorite memories is when i was a kid with my grandpa camping um we went to this lake and we set up tent or we set up camp, we set up a tent and uh, it just started storming so bad. Like I'm talking thunder and lightning, but we would, he would always do story time for me. And so I, I mean, I was like seven or eight years old and he would always tell me stories, but he was, he was, so he was, we were laying in the tent and he was telling me story, like doing story time. And as he was telling me this like spooky story, all the thunder was going, all the lightning was going. And it was just, I don't know. It's just like a, I can just kind of picture like the top of the tent lighting up with lightning as he would like say something like the big boulder started rumbling towards them. The thunder went off. And uh, yeah, it was, that was a that's really cool. great yeah, memory. That's a cool memory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there's there's so many like that, too. Just out of out of the decades of time we spent together. There's so many like that. Do you feel like you connect a lot with young males with your content now? No. Yeah. Uh, not with. With what I do now with making, so if you're not aware of what I do, I make recipe, coffee recipes that are lower calorie. So that's the best way to put it. I make them so they don't have a ton of sugar. They don't have a ton of carbs. Um, some of them have higher protein just so that people can get their favorite coffee drink, but not have it impact their health in a negative way. And currently that, that reaches mostly adults and a lot of women because I built a lot of my platform remaking drinks from Starbucks. And, uh, I think women are probably the top consumer of Starbucks. And so no, in my content right now, I don't, I definitely don't think I reach young men. Um, I don't even reach a lot of men in general. I think, <laughs> I think, I think the percentage wise is like 94, 95% women to five or 6% wow. men. And that's okay. Uh, that that's not what that platform is for. And that's why I'm doing the YouTube because even if I, even if it's still, doesn't end up if it translates my audience now into youtube that's totally cool mm -hmm. um but on the off chance that maybe on spotify or apple Podcasts, it it ends up like getting filtered into some ears that i'm hoping to inspire that would that would be amazing absolutely i think it just diversifies and expands your your audience and your reach so i think it's gonna be great yeah and you know when people search on youtube it's that's what the difference between instagram and youtube on on youtube you go search for I don't know if somebody were to search like, I don't know, this is just going to be a silly example, but how do I be more of a man or how to be a man? And for some reason, you know, I did this podcast or this, this show with somebody and we ended up talking about, you know, masculinity or fatherhood and something in the YouTube SEO triggers that and that pops up for them, you know the possibility is endless with who I could reach on that. So absolutely. Yeah, it, it is. YouTube is a endless black hole. Um, I love <laughs> YouTube with every part of my being. It is the first platform that I was obsessed with. Mm -hmm. And still to this day, I'm very obsessed with we're on a little bit of a breather with YouTube videos right now. And it hurts my soul every day. I look forward to when we get back to it because it is the best. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that, uh, all I've ever known is Instagram. So transitioning to YouTube has been interesting. Um, but thankfully I'm in a position to where I have a great team to help me out with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I can just do what I want to do, which is show up, like get the content shot and then give it to them so they can do their part in the editing and post-production, et cetera. And just really live in, I don't know, sometimes it can sound corny, but like live in my purpose or right. live in, li do, the, do the stuff that's f fulfilling for myself. Yeah. Doing all the back end stuff is very time consuming and can make you resentful, especially if it's not things that you enjoy doing. But if you enjoy the actual creation of it, that's the thing that you just have to focus on. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. Are you, what's your favorite part? Is it the front end or the back end stuff? 
Um, so for the podcast, I love sitting here and just getting to chop it up and have conversation. Um, Miguel and David do everything on the backside for us and they do an amazing job. And the few times that I've had to do what Miguel does, I'm like, my gosh, this is not meant for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can't, David, uh, he's, we finally talked David into traveling here one time cause he lives in Florida. Mm. So we've done things remote with him editing the podcast for, um, I mean, since we started the podcast. So I guess I had three or four years, I suppose, maybe longer than that. Um, and we got him to come here and he brought almost all of his stuff. Like he sent us a picture of him editing everything uh, at his hotel. And huh. I can't imagine doing all that and, and making sure that the sound quality is where it needs to be and uh, everything meshes. Cause I've only listened to it from him as well. Like I, I if he was just to be removed and then we were supposed to take that part over, I would have zero idea what needs to go on. So both of them are, are lifesavers for us and, and endlessly grateful. So um, I'm glad that you're starting out with a team because I know some people start their podcast and they try to like figure out all the pieces. Mm. I'm very grateful that we started with having them in place to help us out there. Yeah, I think that that's just, that just comes with experience to me, in my opinion, is knowing your strengths mm -hmm. and leaning into those strengths. Um, and fortunately over the last eight years, I've been able to figure out that my strengths are not these super analytical backend type of tasks. And my strengths are being on the creative front and being like the front man of whatever's going on. And so as I thought about doing the show, um, I was, I've, I've been doing, I like, I've, I edit, still edit all my own content for Instagram. Um, but I just really took a minute and reflected on, you know, having, having my own business and closing my own business and doing the social media stuff. And if I wanted to add those tasks to my daily life, if that was going to make me move forward, um, in the sense of my career. And I didn't think that it would, I've spent so long building this, uh, freedom of time with the social media stuff that if I were to add those tasks in, I almost felt like I would be taking a step backwards. And so that's what led me to the decision of like, hey, I'm going to find a really good team to work with that can help me on the back end so I can focus on what is being put out there. Absolutely. Um, well, I mean, for the people who do know your your content, what is the, what's the coffee choice that you brought today? Oh, yeah. So especially when I'm traveling, if I go to a new coffee shop or something, I keep it pretty basic. I get an iced Americano. And then I'll get like a little splash of syrup and some half and half. And that's it. Cause, uh, I want to taste the coffee shop's coffee. So getting iced Americano is just espresso and water. It's a good way to taste their coffee. Um, but I also, when I drink cold coffee, I like a little bit of sweet and a little bit of cream in it. Um, but so that's usually what I do, but if it's cold out, I'll get a hot coffee even just black. Um, but if it's over 70 degrees. I usually call iced coffee. <laughs> so we got, what he has there is Fox in the Snow. If you are from Ohio, I think that you would know that uh, coffee shop. What do you, on a scale of one to 10, what do you rank that uh, coffee? This coffee is very good. I actually just posted it on my story er earlier and I said 10 out of 10. Perfect. Because uh, Alex and I, we met there the other day and had a coffee. And so I went back today yeah. uh, to take my girlfriend there so I could take, to show her how good it was. And yeah, it's, it's delicious. And she got a matcha and she said it's, probably one of her favorite matches wow. of all time too. This is high praise for Fox in the Snow. Yeah, so Fox in the Snow, if you're listening, amazing job. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was going to recommend to you that you should do, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're familiar with Dave Portnoy. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, and he does the pizza reviews. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he is absolutely relentless when the pizza's not good. Mm -hmm. um, he's softened up in his old age now. Yeah. Uh, he's he's very consistent with like, well, he, giving people the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. And I was going to recommend that to you, but I also think that you may be just too nice to give like firm reviews mm -hmm. on some of the, the coffee shops. Like, I don't know if you would really be f willing to give someone like a three or four out of 10. Would you be yeah, okay but, with that? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Duncan. Zero out of 10. <laughs> Fucking, I, dude. And people are always like, hey, you should do Dunkin' Recipes. You should do Dunkin' Recipes. And I'm like, first of all, I have. And I get the same complaint every time I do it. And it's that it's never the same. It never tastes the same. Um, the coffee tastes gross to me. I don't like it at all. Some people say that about Starbucks. Some people say that about other places. Um, but for me, Dunkin' is just, I'm just not a fan of their stuff. It tastes very watery. and it always usually has an over excess amount of sweetener in it. Um, so 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not afraid to. <laughs> okay. No, and that's- I the, take it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Duncan for me is not my favorite, but no, that, that would be cool. I think that uh, while I do know a lot about coffee too, um, I think that it would be, if I were to do that, I think I would have to rate like their special drinks. You okay. Know? Less- Less their coffee, so like less their their black coffee and like their bean and all that stuff and their origin, more so just like the way they put their recipe together. Because that's what I do, right, is recipes. I don't really share like black coffee because sure. black coffee by itself is inadvertently healthy. And I think I think it's a cool idea, actually. I'm kind of inspired to do something, do something like that. Uh, but it, yeah, and it would definitely be on like their, whatever their like specialty drink is. How would you rank main chain coffee shops? Mm, okay, so let's let's say main chain. So the only big chain coffee shops are, that I've really been to are Starbucks, Dunkin', Dutch Bros. I know there's a couple of other ones that are uh, Tim Hortons. I know is big, but I've never been there. Okay. Um, there's one called Seven Brew that has been blowing up lately. I also haven't been there, but they are starting to come to Texas, so I will. So really, the only big chain coffee shops that I've tried are Starbucks, Dunkin and Dutch Bros. And oh, man, I just, Starbucks cold brew is so good to me. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say that Starbucks coffee tastes burnt or they have issues with Starbucks as a company or whatever the reason may be. Um, and it's probably, I probably have some bias since I worked there for, you know, a handful of years. Um, but I would say Starbucks out of Starbucks, Dutch Bros and Dunkin, that's how I'd rank them. Starbucks, Dutch Bros and Duncan. And if you get the opportunity to go to Dutch Bros and you track your macros and all that stuff, I would say make that your main coffee shop because Dutch Bros by far has the best sugar-free options for you. Um, they have a lot of great milk options and their coffee is pretty solid. They even have a protein milk. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking for macro-friendly coffee and customization type stuff, Dutch Bros is the way. Amazing. I don't even know if I've ever had Dutch Bros. Yeah, they're starting to they started in Oregon and they're making their way east. So they've had a ton pop up in the Austin area lately. And uh, I think they're just expanding further and further east. They've blown up a lot in the last five years. Hmm. What's your most popular coffee recipe? Man, I think I would probably have to look at my metrics to tell you, but um, anything, I think pumpkin spice every year. <laughs> it's got to be the number one every year. No, yeah. it never fails. Uh, people love their pumpkin spice. And then second to that would probably be, um, oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a, a vanilla bean shaken espresso. So it uses vanilla bean powder and shaken an espresso and it's really delicious and people huh. love that one. Awesome. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite? Uh, my favorite is one of the drinks, one of the first recipes I ever posted and I drink it almost every time I go to Starbucks. It's a French vanilla cold brew. Um, and if you don't know, French vanilla is hazelnut and vanilla. And so it's literally just a cold brew with some sugar-free vanilla syrup, a little bit of hazelnut syrup and some half and half. And it's been consistent every time. It's got the perfect amount of sweetness and creaminess. And, uh, yeah, that's my, that's my favorite drink of all time. What's the recipe that you tried and you thought was going to be fire and then you tried it and you're like, dude, this is terrible. Ooh, man, that would probably be. That's tough. I think it would probably be something involving mocha, mm. like using mocha as a base and then adding some other flavor. Um, I think it would probably, no, because I did one that was chocolate and cinnamon and it was actually really good. Uh, so probably there's a, a syrup flavor called toffee nut. I don't even know what the hell a toffee nut is. <laughs> <laughs> something to do with toffee. Yeah. Uh, so I tried mocha and toffee nut and it just did not. And the almond milk at Starbucks is it's like cardboard. Okay. So I don't really recommend it unless you really don't want dairy, but it has the least amount of calories for, for any of the milks. So mm -hmm. that's why I do use it sometimes. So any, yeah, anything using the almond milk and chocolate, I suppose. Is there anything that you try and avoid when you're making the recipes, like specific ingredients? Obviously you're trying to keep calories lower, but is there anything that you try to avoid specifically? Not really. Okay. Um, I just, my goal is to make it as low calorie as possible. So sometimes it'll have 14 or 15 grams of carbs, mm -hmm. which may, could be high for some people's diet and it'll still be 65, 70 calories. So, um, 
it's all, I guess it's all in terms of the macronutrient balance, it's all relative, mm -hmm. but that's why I used, my name is, my handle is the macro barista. And I used to focus more on macronutrients when macros were more trendy. Um, but nowadays I think that I focus on the calorie content because it's hard to get a lot of protein in a coffee unless you're literally mixing a protein shake with it. And so my goal is to just keep it, if I can, around 10 grams of carbs and under three or four grams of fat, and there's usually minimal protein. Okay. Yeah, I would love for you to have a like a, a rating. Maybe you started on your story mm -hmm. and you just, as you guys are continuing this road trip, as every stop you have, having a, a rating system, that would be fun to follow along mm -hmm. with. Yeah, that'd be a good highlight to have on my stories. Yeah, just like a couple minutes or whatever, or not even that long. It could just be, yeah, I think it'd be nice. Yeah, no, I think it's a good idea. I should start doing that. Um, I think it'd just be fun. Are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing? turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty. I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s, able to grow their glutes with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one -on -one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program. Because you are awesome and I want you to have this program, I'm going to give you $25 off, making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. For sure. Um, we're going to train after we get done here. How is... Uh, what are, we didn't even get to talk about this when we had coffee. What, uh, is there anything specific that you're training towards at the moment? Uh, I'm just training to feel good. Okay. Um, I think in the past, so it's cool you bring this up. I've always struggled with long-term consistency in my training, you know, in terms of sticking to a surplus for over six months and really writing something out to make impactful gains. Um, so right now, uh, my goal is to just feel the best I can. Um, I train as heavy as I can. Uh, that doesn't like hurt my joints. Mm -hmm. um, currently, I'm at like a maintenance level uh, with my with my intake, and I do like an upper lower split with one with an extra day that's just arm arm focused. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, also I incorporate. Uh, one full day of athletic training in my in my weekly split uh, where I actually work with a trainer and that's been outside of the weights that has been the most impactful thing on my um, first physical health but also mental health uh, it being over 30 now and still being able to move somewhat athletically maybe not like an actual athlete like a college athlete or something but move probably more athletically than 90 percent of people my age uh, has felt really, really good. It has made my confidence go up. And it has also made me not feel bad about being a leaner guy. Mm. Um, being in the fitness, being in the fitness space for so long. Um, looking at people like you who are just jacked. <laughs> Thank you. It can <laughs> it can uh it can make you feel bad about not being as big. And um, but when I'm training and I'm moving good and I'm feeling good. And I just look and able to look athletic that, I don't know, that has given me a big peace of mind about not being like the biggest guy anymore um, because I know that I can perform. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that was kind of a lot of information. No, yeah, but, that's great. Yeah. Um, for the athletics stuff, are you translating that to any like cardiovascular work or any sport that you're playing now? Yeah. So about a year ago, I picked up pickleball, which I know has been a big trend. Uh, I picked it up pretty seriously to the point where I'm like, uh, intentionally drilling like three times a week and then, uh, just trying to do high level play. Mm. And that is, it is translated a ton. So a lot of the athletic movement I'm doing has to do with like explosiveness, hand-eye coordination, lateral movement. Um, and it's, it's made a huge difference in that. It makes it just so like any, any sport where you need to move your feet 
having really good footwork just puts your body in position where you don't have to work as hard to reach for something with your hand or put your your upper body in the right position. Having great footwork makes the entire game easier. And so that's been a, a big part of it for me. So have you been in tournaments? Are you in a league? Or? I played in a couple of tournaments, um, but really my intention with that has just been to improve okay. my level so that when I do decide to play a tournament again, uh, I'll play at a much, much higher level. I think the only tournaments I ever played was when I like first started. It's like that that Dunning-Kruger effect where at the beginning I was like, oh yeah, I'm a, f- I'm a beast, like I'm killing it. And then it's like, oh, okay, in reality, I kind of suck. And then I like humbled myself and was like, okay, I'm not as good as I thought I was, but now I'm gonna take the time to be intentional about improving. And um, yeah, so I've just been trying to get better and become a more solid player and have a better foundation that way that when I do decide to do a tournament again, it can be like at this higher level. Sure. Um, you were saying that you have struggled in the past with sticking to, uh, a dietary intake for longer than six months. Do you mm-hmm. feel like you're doing a better job now? Yeah. So it's, it's, I don't know for a long time. I'd also dealt with binge eating. Okay. And that was the first thing that I ended up working on. Um, and I feel like in 2020, at the end of 21, going into 22 is when I really just like had to take control of what was going on. Cause there was, there was months where I would just every other night would just be eating like two or 3000 calories in, in my dinner and just, just going crazy with it. And I, then I over, then I would overcompensate. I mean, you know, this being in this space, yeah. you know how binge eating works. You go for months, you go for months where you just eat terribly. You eat so much food and gain weight. And then you go for months where you're like focused and locked back in, but you're under eating. And so you just, any potential gains you had during that overeating phase, you lose because now you're under eating, you're not even maintaining. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've dealt with binge eating for a long time up until about 2022. And then I found a really healthy, like uh, healthy spot with how I was eating. And then at the end of 2022, going into 23, I decided to go into a surplus and On the first half, the first six months of 2023, uh, I was very locked in and very dialed into my training and nutrition to where I was eating 4,200 calories a day. And I was making amazing gains. I didn't gain a ton of fat, um, but something happened where I I went to Costa Rica for a wedding and fell off track and couldn't get myself back on track. Mm. And then I picked up playing pickleball. And so then I wasn't really lifting and I was only playing pickleball for multiple hours a day, just burning all these calories. Um, and then, so the last, the last like six months have been me getting back into more so of a maintenance, getting ready to go into a surplus again, just because I let pickleball kind of took over and I stopped training as much. And, um, yeah, I, I think that it's just, it's just a learning experience and like, journey of growth for me um to figure out that's why you said what what am i doing for training now i'm mm-hmm. doing what makes me feel good yeah and i'm not really intuitively eating but uh i kind of have been to where i'm just making sure that i'm hitting over 200 grams of protein and then just taking it easy on carbs and fat to what feels good um and that that has just been what's been working for me currently so getting out of the vicious cycle of, of overconsumption, underconsumption. what was the tool or skill that got you out of it? A lot of it had to do with, I, I went to therapy, mm. um, and I didn't go specifically for that eating, uh, disorder, but I went for, for other reasons. And when I started working on my mental health as a whole, it impact, like it, I won't say fix, but it gave me awareness of the way I was eating and allowed me to heal myself in that regards to where I didn't see a piece of cherry pie and want to devour the whole thing just to fill a void, to fill an emotional void. Mm. Uh, because a lot of, I'm, I'm, I'm not a professional. This is not advice. I'm just speaking on my experience. Uh, I think that a lot of binge eating is fueled by emotion, not, not necessarily because somebody's hungry and wants to eat like a shithead. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that for me, that was the case. There was just a lot of unprocessed trauma and unresolved emotions that I would eat. So that way I didn't have to feel them and deal with them. And when I went to therapy, it allowed me to start to learn how to process my emotions and deal with those traumas I had been through. And, you know, concurrently, it seemed like the binge eating issues 
kind of went away. Yeah. Didn't feel the, even the desire for them necessarily yeah, as you worked much. through those things. Mm -hmm. Are you still working through therapy? Um, no, I haven't been. So the, 2022 is when I went and it was, it's so weird, man. Therapy is so weird. And like mental health is so weird yeah. because I feel like I transformed my life in the matter of four months mm -hmm. and just like changed everything mentally. And since then I haven't gone back just because I feel like it gave me so many tools and resources yeah. to take care of things on my own. Um, so yeah, I'm not currently in therapy or anything, mm -hmm. but I'm a huge, huge, um, like uh, adversary or not, uh, not adversary, uh, <laughs> not adversary, <laughs> obviously uh, advocate of, yes. of people going to therapy and you know, there's just, it's tough. Cause there's a, there can be a lot of negative, I don't know. I don't know, negative views of therapy. It's yeah. tough to find a good therapy. Well, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's it's just like any any time you're trying to find one on one service for something as deep rooted as therapy, or even within fitness coaching, it's it's tough to find the right person. But when you find the right person, it's amazing. Because um, I'm a I'm a big advocate for therapy as well, and I think that the the one thing with therapy that I I would speak to is that if you're just continuously going without a targeted goal, I think that it puts people in a place where they're just ruminating on what they are dealing with mm -hmm. more than what they need to. And so then they need to kind of step, take a step back and have more of a targeted goal and kind of go in increments potentially mm -hmm. to to and, and again not a professional myself from my own personal experience, as well as watching some of my clients go through these things. I find that to be the most productive, I suppose. Um, but I think that therapy is a, a fantastic tool as you're navigating through different chapters of life and um, likely having not gone through or, or some of the things that had passed happened and then being able to work through that to get through the next chapter or get to the next level for you as, as life. Cause I'm a, also a big advocate of just kind of looking at everything as a big video game, mm. like with looking at things of this is my current boss or, or, um, current, uh, challenge that I'm facing against for me to get to the next level and just get to the new level for myself or learn more about myself or, um, reach a, a higher, I don't know, intellectual point or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, and by having it that way, it, makes things more enjoyable for me and also allows for me to see challenges or adversity in my life as more of an opportunity rather than this thing of like, oh, I'm scared of it. Yeah, I totally agree. Just zooming out on your life, it, it helps you gain a much more positive perspective on everything going on. Yeah. Um, Cause if even, even with me, like where I struggled to be consistent for so long, still, the arrow does look like this. And even though it may not be like this steep, it still trends upwards over the last 10 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's just one of the, that just taking a step to zoom out is something that has helped me a ton. Okay. Um, now I, you haven't said this, I know that for myself, I struggled a ton with all or nothing mentality. I was like, I was very black and white and something that has transformed my viewpoint on things, transformed my health as well as my relationships has been finding that middle ground and being okay with like, I'm still making progress, but it's not this absolute nature. Do you feel like you've struggled with that previously? I think so. I think that that's kind of a message we see on media mm. all, all across social media and other medias is that if you're not all in, then you're not in at all. And that's such bullshit mm -hmm. because it's not realistic to like one of the, this is not, I don't want to say things, but there's a certain program that became very trendy. Um, it deals with you do, you do X amount of things for a certain amount of days and it's very restrictive. It's a very difficult thing to do, which I think is great if that's what you need to, to get on the right track, but it's not something that's a long-term play. And so, yeah, for me, it's been like, I mean, I guess the best way to equate it since we're both in the fitness and nutrition type space is like, there's nothing wrong with having, you know, a dessert. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with enjoying the foods you love. And that's literally what I do. They're, they're, tell people there's nothing wrong with right. enjoying the stuff you love, but you don't have to let that control your life. You don't have to just go all in on that side of things. And so, um, yeah, finding, but finding the balance is tough, but it's so rewarding once you do, because then you just, like I said, you feel good. Mm -hmm. Like you feel good about yourself and where you're at. Um, yeah, I think the all or nothing mentality can really hurt a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, 
what else do we have to tell the people? I mean, you and I have talked for hours over the last couple of days. Yeah. I feel like there's things that I still want to share with everybody. Uh, what, anything come to your mind? I mean, I love to, I love to yap. Yeah. I love to talk. <laughs> so yeah, the other day when we, uh, when we had coffee, we ended up chatting for like two hours. Um, and just didn't even realize, just lose track of time. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man, for me, I'm just, I'm grateful that we're having this conversation now. We had that conversation then, uh, because, Something as I grow older, and I'm only 31, I'm still young, but as I grow older, I'm valuing connection and I'm valuing conversation and relatability so much more. And so, yeah, I'm just, I'm grateful to, <laughs> I forgot who I was talking to, uh, but they said, every day that I'm vertical is a good day. Yeah. And that was so, one of the things you said when we were at the coffee yeah, shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just that, that stuck with me. I can't remember who said it, but it's, it's just stuck with me since then. Yeah. Um, every day I'm vertical is I'm grateful. I love that. It was, I was thrilled when you had uh, shot me a message to even get to hook up. Cause it was like, um, one, I wasn't anticipating it. And Miguel sitting here behind the cameras knows that I am very unlikely to say yes to really anything that takes me away from my office yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for me to be as excited as I was and like really move my schedule around to go is, is a, an important thing. So I was really grateful for you reaching out and getting to hang out and getting to, you know, see you today. So thanks man. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Uh, well you guys, thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. Uh, check out Alex. If you have not seen his uh, Instagram yet at the macro barista and what's the podcast going to be called? Uh, you can still find it under the same name, but okay. the show is going to be called the tailgate coffee table. Perfect. Check out the podcast as it launches. We will see you in the next episode. Thanks so much for tuning in.